<laughs> I bet he was. <clears throat> but it worked out fine. We were able to work out a license agreement with them. But at that point, it still wasn't a home run. Uh, we, we got the park branded, which we felt was a great name, but still we had to get the financing uh, in place. And that was another long, hard journey mm -hmm. to get the financing in place. And I don't want to bore you today with no, all those sure. stories. Sure, sure. $200 million. Well, we got, we got <coughs> some time, and obviously part of the thrill here, $200 million wasn't enough. No, was no, it's not enough. we got to go for more. Yeah, we got to yeah. go for more. So we went for more. And, uh, and Stephen was good at that. Stephen had been involved in uh, financing packages even much larger than what you all ultimately uh, came in contact with. But, Stephen uh, could sell ice to Eskimos. Let me put ooh, it that boy, way. Boy, really. He's uh, very clever with the numbers and... That doesn't mean he did anything wrong, right, but, no, no. but they knew the numbers. And, and Felix Moosenden, I don't think you've met Felix. We haven't. We haven't. Felix was with Universal for about 30 years, and if you look at his resume, he started as a sweeper. Oh, boy. In the Orlando uh, amusement, uh, well, the theater, the studio tour. Right. And uh, worked his way up until he got promoted to come to the East Coast and actually run Universal in Orlando and he was there and oversaw both of those parks. Is that right? Being built and um, eventually, I don't know whether he just got burned out, but he decided he didn't want to do that anymore. Right. And uh, Stephen knew him mm -hmm. and I think John knew him and so they talked to Stephen, uh, to, uh, to him to come Stephen, with us right. uh, to be our operations person. Right. So basically the team was John, Felix, and Stephen. Mm -hmm. And, and each one of them had a unique contribution to the package. And, and John, of course, we know is the creative arm-waving sure. guy. Yeah. And Felix, the more conventional operations guy. Right. And then Stephen brought along all the financial skills needed to pull the package together. It was like a great trio there, too. It was a great trio. It is a great trio. And uh, they, when we eventually got our final funding with the bonding uh, the way we went with the bonds, they actually had to make presentations to a good number of uh, funds because right. that's basically who bought our bonds were funds. Sure, sure. And uh, everybody said they did a great job, very professional, and we were successful in getting it. That's uh, tremendous. Getting it done, yeah. getting it financed. But between the beginning and, <clears throat> and the end, I just want to say that there's been a great team of people involved. And I know in some projects people say, well, if it weren't for so-and-so, this wouldn't have happened, or if it wasn't for so-and-so, this wouldn't have happened. Um, and that's not really the case. This has been a collaboration of a lot of talents. Mm -hmm. uh, Dick Rose and I would go to Orlando uh, occasionally and meet with the team and right. more architects, and we had this big boardroom, and it must uh, 20 people sitting around the boardroom, and each one of them would get up and introduce themselves and tell us what they had done right. and what they were doing for us. And it was virtually a who's who in the entertainment industry. Wow. And we were very privileged to get people to get involved with us because we were basically greenhorns, you might oh, say. Yeah. Sure. <clears throat> a private individuals trying to do a project of this magnitude. Right. But they all, it's a close-knit community, I found out in this industry, that almost everybody knows everybody. Mm -hmm. And when they heard we were working on a new concept, uh, a lot of them wanted to get on board. Really? Good. And, and uh, they did. And they did get yeah. on board. And they just, I mean, some of the guys on our yeah. staff did this final. Hold this up and just to see the extent of that, how thick that is. I don't know if, if viewers can really uh, gauge that, but it's a gigantic book prepared by <laughs> Morris Architects. It is very heavy. I'm surprised on a Friday morning I can pick this up, but it is a magnificent piece. Of course, your managing member, the chairman, um, and John, John Benkowski's name I see right on the back there, but uh, a lot of time uh, that went If you look this. inside the front cover, yeah. they did something quite humorous. Oh, good. <coughs> yeah. Right here. Uh, one more. There's some pictures. One more in. That's right. Which they, these are the... Yeah. Oh, good. They really uh, picked <laughs> you all up. That's the... Uh, that's. Your, are you in there? I can't no, see No, no, no. Yeah. I'm not yeah. in there. But you can see these people are very famous people in the, in the, in the industry, but, but they put their names by them. And I actually showed this to one of my clients one time, and I said, I want to show you the presentation booklet we have. And I turned it to that page, and somebody said... Oh, is that John Binkowski? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you, you see what names. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's tremendous. <clears throat> that is tremendous, and some amazing names, of course. Uh, 
And as you, as you highlighted, we haven't yet met Felix, but John <laughs> and Stephen we have, and some of these other names, it's yeah. thrilling to think about their involvement and their investment of time and, of course, ultimately resources and mm -hmm. y'all's tremendous investment of resources on the local level to kick off any project. Well, you know, one of the big hurdles we had to overcome at the very beginning <clears throat> was that there was an Islands of Adventure right. proposed for the air base. Right, right. And they really approached a lot of people in Myrtle Beach to fund that project. Right. And so that project did not get funded and a lot of people lost some money. So Dick Rosen and I at the very beginning decided that we needed to carry this project as far as we could on our own. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and we did meet with some local business people who uh, had an opportunity to get involved with us and for one reason or another chose not to. Right. Probably because they thought we were crazy. But yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. And maybe they are. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> we are. I don't know. But uh, we chose basically to fund it ourselves. Uh, Hugh Martin came in with us a little Good. later on. Yes, yes. And of course, I had involved with me some partners in some other partnerships that I right. do things around the beach, and right. and they gave me enough rope to hang ten people to get Ooh. into this project. You know, right. to, to use their money and my money and, right. and to, to move it forward, but. I guess as it turned out, we did the right thing. But one thing I want to mention also <clears throat> is that this may sound crazy, but as an accountant, you would expect that I would really poured over the numbers and I would look at all the details. But yeah. Dick and I really didn't look at it from a standpoint of nickels and dimes. We look at it as a basically we have a market here right. in Myrtle Beach. Right. We need an attraction for Myrtle Beach. Right. What can we do to get that attraction in Myrtle Beach? And it was never really driven by profit motive, mm -hmm. although that's going to be nice if we have a profit. Right. You know, we all, we're not in it for our looks, no, but sure. we hope it will be profitable. But we hope it will be successful, and we hope it's going to meet everybody's expectations mm -hmm. as to when they get out there and they pay their hard-earned money, right. <clears throat> that it's what they expect and they get quality Oh, where they, yeah. where they yeah. spend. And I think it has, as you walk through the park and you look at the details and look at the the, the concrete on the ground. Right. I mean, right. Uh, the creative things we've done just with the giant guitar as you walk oh, yeah. in. Oh, yeah. And in the exterior of the buildings, we hired a company out of Orlando to do all our facades. They right. do Disney's facades, Universal's facades. So the quality of the product is there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we feel like for value, it's going to be very good value. It's going to be with moderate crowds. It's going to be a six-hour visit. It can be oh, any yeah. hour visit. Absolutely. Um, That's why the annual pass for $150 is such a <coughs> tremendous deal. Yes. Which would go from now until May 9th of uh, of next year of '09. Absolutely. Which is a tremendous. And for folks who bought annual passes, a lot of us, a lot of folks have bought annual passes already. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was good from. April 24th or whatever that date was. Well, you May save on parking every time you That's come right. to the park. That's right. Save the $10 on parking. And you parking. get a discount, I believe, within the park with At this At least pass. 10% on everything. Right. Yeah, that's so exactly it's a great right. bargain. And uh, I'm hoping a lot of people will really enjoy the park and, and, and look at it as an attraction, not just for Myrtle Beach, right. but for South Carolina. Absolutely. The biggest investment ever in uh, into, into tourism in the state mm -hmm. of South Carolina. It's it is. happening right behind us. And of course, even these shops, many of these have been planned down the road for for a, a Paradise City, I believe. That's what uh, I understand. More uh, a future opportunity uh, down here, and 501, the infrastructure that, of course, the Fantasy Arbor Bridge, which ultimately open in the not too distant future, which will funnel a lot of traffic both in and out of the park area. It should be tremendous. Well, it's going to open up the front of the park for the right. people where now they're kind of coming in the back way. They see right. Mall One and Two. Uh, they don't really get that theme park feel until you come off that new bridge and you look down and you see that entrance, you see oh, the yeah. parking lot, you see people going in and it makes you want to hurry up and get, kind of get around the block yes. and, and get in and start having fun. Yes. And uh, so it's all about fun. You and Dick on the early stages for folks who've been in Myrtle a long time, obviously John was really roaring forward, albeit not someone who'd been here necessarily all those years. Of course, Patrick Henry very local deep ties mm -hmm. and Hugh Martin anyone else on the local level to really I know you said just lots of different people but anyone well there were uh, of course one of my partners in my accounting firm Ed Farmer right uh, 
I, you know, I had his support all along sure. or I wouldn't have done it. Sure. Uh, but uh, basically those are the people. Now there were some other folks who helped us along. Right. There's a gentleman by the name of Buddy Hux, who's a real estate appraiser. Sure. Buddy owned the cinema theaters and uh, he held on to that and gave us an option to buy it. Right, right. AIG held on to this property. Sure. Well, not this property, the property behind us. Uh, they had taken that back into repossession. Right, right. And uh, they held on to that for us, hoping we could pull this together. As you did, yeah. And uh, those were the key people, basically. That's that, tremendous. That, that made yeah. it happen. Yeah, yeah. Any favorite rides you're looking forward to getting on? Of course, you've probably been on everything or virtually Well, I'll tell you, there's some I'm not looking forward to getting on <laughs> because I won't get on them, but the younger right. crowd will probably love them. There's some back in the British Invasion that'll spin you around and make you go up and down and um, probably make you not want to have lunch that afternoon. But right. my daughter rode one, and she said, Daddy, it was great. And oh, I said, yeah. I said, okay, well, good. I'm glad you had a good time. You that, said you had two girls. Two Either, girls. Uh, the, any favorite rides for them? Or are they thrilled that their daddy got into uh, something like this, having well, dragged you around to everything east of the Mississippi? Well, we started so long ago on this project. They were 12 and 14 at the time, and right. now they're 18 and 20. You right. know? Yeah. Uh, so they've lived with me this whole time to see it. To see it. Daddy, when are you going to open that park? You know, when are you <laughs> open that park? And I kept yeah. saying, well, I don't know, but we're working on it. You know, yeah. But uh, they love the roller coasters, obviously, as any young person oh, yeah. does. Yeah. Um, and I think some of the other rides that haven't been open yet, right. which will be open today, today as we right. open, yeah. uh, we've got a great ride, which I'm not sure what you call it, R maximum RPM yeah. is where yeah. you get in a, little, a miniature car and you get into this Ferris wheel type thing and it goes up and then you come down and that's all I know about it. But I think that's going to be a lot of fun. And we you have that wet ride that uh, we're going to open, oh, which yeah. will give the opportunity for people to wet people below and people below to wet them above. And I love it. I love it. we got to get out there. We'll see you later yes. on today. Tim, yeah. I'm sorry we've run out of time. Great being with you this it's morning. Great being here. Stay tuned to more <coughs> Carolina People with Tim Duncan coming up next. I love it. you got to hear this theme concept from July of 2001 for Fantasy Harbor. Somewhere across the sea of dreams lies Fantasy Harbor. Its dazzling, magical lighthouse guides us into a world of thrills and amazement. At Fantasy Harbor, each season of the year has been magically transformed into an eternal port of call filled with festive holiday surprises and fun for the whole family. Fast forward to today, the big day, the grand opening of the Hard Rock Park, and you'd hear about the next revolution a quality theme park with a rock and roll attitude. You're going to see it out there. Get out there today at 10 o'clock, 236 Rock or HardRockPark.com. You think about it for Tim and Dick Rosen working so hard, and then Ed and Patrick and Hugh and so many others teaming up with John and Stephen and Felix and many, many more to make this a reality. Get out there at 10 a.m. It kicks off today, the grand opening of the Hard Rock Park. Thanks so much for everything, Tim. Thank you.